matchup against you off here. Uh, and so that last game definitely may have given him some experience and some knowledge on how to approach this matchup. Of course, we're seeing it. It was a lot of sun down here in the finals. You have obviously no exception here. However, some key differences instead having that Porygon 2 and that Grimmsnarl. So that Reggie Alecki that gave Jonathan some issues in the last set, obviously no longer an issue here in this matchup. Yeah, notably no Reggie Lecky and Umbreon. We just saw Jonathan kind of struggle to deal with that combination as well as Sun. So Yoav opting for a more defensive uh, Grimstar and Porygon 2. These Pokemon are helpful. Uh, the Porygon 2 can be, you know, really, really tanky. It can take multiple attacks, but uh, I think one thing to consider here is part of the issue for uh you know jonathan's last opponent was not having enough damage in the early game especially when using pokemon that are really bulky right and so for yoav it's really important to actually get enough damage out with whoever you end up maxing you know groudon's obviously essential here once again it feels like the battle of the venusaurus might be a big component here and for jonathan one thing like he's definitely going to want to make sure is doing enough damage also not getting put to sleep here i think now you know you don't have to worry about any yawns that umbreon with yawn was such a nuisance in that last last matchup for him so uh Yoav doesn't have that this time around but I think Grimmsnarl can be a pretty big component for Yoav where you can set up light screen uh, and just disrupt a little bit uh, I believe we've seen it have Thunder Wave as well so that can slow down Jonathan's Venusaur a little bit so from Yoav's end it's really about doing enough damage uh in yeah e even with the support Pokemon that you're bringing for Jonathan and I definitely expect to see Kyogre that Venusaur that Tornadus um and that like you know the same four Pokemon that Jonathan's been playing with I think once again makes a lot of sense in the context of this matchup so with the dual weather versus the sun here, which do you think is going to end up being prevalent? We saw how strong the dual weather combination can be, but we also saw how it could be a little bit of a hindrance that Kyogre in the last match not being able to get the key KOs that it needed with the Torkoal being forced to swap in, resetting the weather there. Yet, of course, Yoav just needs the sun, has ways to set the sun, can utilize Jonathan's sun too. So how do you think that's going to shake up? I think for Jonathan, it's all about knocking out the Venusaur. Uh, you know, in that last set, late game Kyogre was really strong, especially in those earlier games, but definitely struggled a little bit because of a bulky Umbreon that kept healing back up. Porygon 2 can do something similar in this set where uh, if you stick around for a while, you can recover the damage off. Uh, being able to recover is really important. But uh, there was also that late game Regieleki uh, that was the adjustment right in that last set. This time around, if Venusaur goes down, there is no consistent late game damage against the Kyogre other than maybe, I don't know, I guess like, ground on if you have the sun up so for jonathan it's about playing well in the early game and then having that kyogre to try to sweep through in the end game and for yoav it's about conserving your weather so that jonathan can't just bring out that kyogre and sweep through in the last couple of turns of the game all right so another ground on versus kyogre classic matchup let's get into this match losers finals this is going to be such a big match here of course we are going to see that <laughs> venusaur torkoal yet again but with the lack of umbreon of course on yoav's team i mean this venusaur hopefully will be faring a lot better this time around yeah you know most critically here now you don't have to deal with your venusaur getting put to sleep Jonathan in that last set ended up falling asleep with the Venusaur all three times, right? All three turns with the Yawn. So uh, this time around, you know, Yoav has that Grimstar. It can be a little bit disruptive. Thunder Wave is definitely a little tricky to play around. It just ensures Yoav's Venusaur will always go first. And then you have to deal with the potential for Paralysis rolls as well. So, you know, not as effective as sleep necessarily uh, in terms of denying attacks. But then uh, Jonathan's got uh, a couple points every turn with dealing with the Para. So uh, Yoav going for that max right away. Uh, his Venusaur, I believe, is a little bit more offensive. Uh, so it has that life orb, has that max quake. So we'll see if Torkoal can actually survive because if it can and get it gone off against the Oz Venusaur, it's a really big deal. All right, both of these players going for the maxes on the first turn here, just looking to apply some big pressure. Max Venusaur, of course, coming out from Jonathan's end as well, but definitely is not going to be liking that Thunder Wave coming out from the Grimmsnarl here. But at least with the Thunder Wave, it's going to be slow, but at least it's not a sleep. So there it is with the Thunder Wave, and it's always, you know, a little bit nerve-wracking to get your Max Mom paralyzed on turn one, right? Because that's just three turns of uh, paralysis you're trying to attack through. There is the Max Quake on the Torkoal, but it hangs on! And that Torkoal just hanging in here. Of course, you, know, you don't want to see that Torkoal <laughs> surviving on here, especially with the pressure that this Torkoal can offer with things like Yawn, which Yoav does not have on his side here. So let's see, Venusaur opting to go for that Max Ooze into the Grimmsnarl. 
dealing about half of its damage and of course getting a special attack boost on Jonathan's end and it's all going to be down to what this Torkoal opts to do now that it managed to hung on through the turn and it is a yawn in the Yaw's Venusaur here. The Jonathan having his Venusaur yawn all throughout the last set finally being able to dish that back out and yawn someone else's Venusaur for once. Yeah, that definitely is a big advantage. Uh, I think in the sense that you'll get an extra turn of max with the Venusaur in terms of just getting another attack off. Uh, I think at both at this point, both players will want a Vine Lash certainly to get that residual damage adding up. Uh, you'll obviously saw opting for that Vine Lash into Torkoal that covers for a protect option. Really like that option, uh, and also you know free opportunity to get that light screen up. So. You know, I think both players are probably decently content with how turn one played out, but it is critical Torkoal survives. If it doesn't survive there, you know, you just knock it out. Uh, and then Venusaur on your offside is in such a good position, especially because it's just consistently outspeeds Jonathan's Venusaur now. So Vine Last residual damage will go up, but in the end, Yoav will only be able to, you know, knock out one Pokemon, but Venusaur on Jonathan then shoots that full para. <laughs> Jonathan not getting a break in this game either. Just commenting about how he wasn't asleep at least, but being paralyzed is not going to really do, <laughs> do him too much better here. But at least now it is time for Yoav's Venusaur to take a nap. But that full paralysis on, like, turn two of the max is definitely something you don't want to see if you're Jonathan here. Yeah, and that's the scary thing about Thunder Wave, right? As soon as you get paralyzed each turn, you are hoping that you don't get that full paralysis. So, uh, you know, yo, it made sense for you all to go for it right from turn one, just slow down the Venusaur. That's really important in a matchup like this. Uh, in the end, you know, getting that Vine Lash damage residual adding up. Uh, however, you know, what's interesting here is that despite both players having max, like they're not actually going to really knock out more than one Pokemon basically in their three turns of max. So for Jonathan's end, once again, your goal is to try to not get another full paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> no break for Jonathan's down oh. in the losers finals. The Torgal is going to be able to hit a little bit of chip into each of those Pokemon, but unfortunately is going to go down from that Vine Lash. So somehow in the previous games, at least getting two turns of max is a lot better than the one turn it got before the full paralysis the following two. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and it actually doesn't even end up getting that Vine Lash at all, right? So there's no residual damage adding up on your offside of the field right now. So definitely a couple tough turns there for Jonathan in the end. Uh, not able to do very much with the max, and that, that's why, you know, Thunder Wave can be such a good attack. We saw it so much back in the earlier generations. It's a little bit weaker now, of course, because Thunder Wave can miss. Paralysis is a little bit worse than back in the day, but having a lot of strong effect here. And Grimstar being able to slow down everything is a really big deal because Jonathan typically plays towards this late game tail when there's another Thunder Wave coming out. And once again, like Jonathan's win con is to try to, you know, gain weather control, but it gets increasingly more difficult to do that as you lose more resources. Posing Venusaur, finally making a move here, just opting to go for that Weather Ball and Yoav's Venusaur, and is just going to be taking it out of the field. So those KOs that it couldn't pick up, well, Max, at least it can pick up oh. afterwards. And another Paralysis! This tornado is not faring too well. These Paralysis on Jonathan's end are just stacking up, and I mean, you're Jonathan. This is, this is just bad luck headed your way. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely frustrating. So I think, you know, regardless of how this game plays out, you might want to consider knocking out Grimmsnarl as quickly as possible, right, in the next game, so that it only gets at most maybe one Thunder Wave off. But a lot of favorable paralysis rolls for Yoav in this one. Porygon 2 comes out, so uh, Venusaur finally, you know, manages to avoid a turn getting paralyzed, does hit that Sleep Powder, but the main issue for Jonathan right now is that there's not that much damage output right now. And Tornadus, another paralysis. I feel like I've seen this one before. <laughs> best of five if you are going to get unlucky on this paralysis rolls in game one if this ends up being the difference you have to just hope you don't get this unlucky in the following games but at least hitting that sweet powder onto the porygon at two it's not just all the rolls in yav's favor but jonathan at least can hit some paral some statuses back on yav's end of the field here yeah, it's got to be a little bit frustrating if you're Jonathan, right? Because the whole point was, hey, if you can, if Tornadus gets attacks off those two turns, like Heat Waves, for example, Grimmsnarl feigns, and then you actually win the Weather War, right? Um, so if you win that Weather War, that means you get Kyogre out, uh, you switch it in after Yoav brings out the Groudon, and then you have full Weather Control. So uh, it's a really, really unfortunate, you know, back-to-back -back paralysis there, and... 
in the end, now it feels like your wob is in a solid spot. Uh, of course, with Sleep Powder, there's always a way, but now you're trying to hit Sleep Powders through Paralysis, you know, and you're gonna go first so the Pokemon can just wake up immediately. Uh, Fernandez is gonna go for Protect here, but, you know, Porygon manages to wake up quickly enough. It's still looking really strong. Oh! My goodness. <laughs> and not even just getting paralyzed, but the Porygon 2 managing to wake up as well, setting that trick room. Hitting the sleep powder through the paralysis was amazing and all, but if the Porygon 2 is just gonna wake up right away, I mean, that's not what you want to see. No, and at this point, it feels like the game is lost. It's really difficult, bar a lot of crazy Preston's Blades misses. I, I like the decision here uh, on Yoav's side to Ice Beam and Preston's Blades. Uh, just to get the KO on Venusaur. This is actually a really smart switch by Jonathan because he's probably just going for a Weather Ball in the rain against the Groudon. So if Preston's Blades mits, misses uh, and Venusaur survives, right? Then you can actually maybe KO the Groudon. That gives you a chance of winning this one because there actually isn't that much damage output. So. Oh, Venus actually outspeed, but goes for the sleep powder and misses. Absolutely no luck for Jonathan in this first match. Preston Blades, of course, is also going to hit both of the targets here, and it takes that Venusaur down. Yeah, so that was actually really smart as well from Jonathan to bring in the Kyogre. That gets rid of the Sun, so then you actually outspeed the Groudon under Trick Room because Venusaur is paralyzed, but actually opts to go for the Sleep Powder rather than something like a Leap Storm or a Weather Ball. Perhaps not confident on actually picking up the Knockout there. I mean, if you do connect on Groudon, that definitely gives you an out as well. So Jonathan fighting really hard, but has just got every unfavorable role in this game. I think that's like six Paras, a Miss as well, so it's not been great for Jonathan here. And now it just feels like he has just far too few resources, especially with this eerie impulse onto the Kyogre. Fernando's opting to protect, but this Kyogre, I mean, it is still in rain, but the negative two special attack is not going to fare too well. It is going to connect with that Origin Pulse, doing barely nothing to that Porygon 2 and not even picking up the KO on the Grimmsnarl. I think, you know, at this point, if you're Jonathan, this game was really frustrating, right? But it feels like so much went wrong for him to lose the game. And I feel like he brought the right Pokemon at the end of the day. You know now that your Torkoal can survive that Max Quake from the opposing Venusaur as well. Yes, it was very frustrating to get paralyzed multiple times in a row and have these misses. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, it's just gonna be a formality as this uh, you know game finishes up, but more or less like, you just have to play around the paras you and you have to you know like the odds of getting parrot as much as he did are really really slim obviously now one way you can mitigate the paralysis a little bit is to try to just knock out grimmsnarl on turn one uh, there is that incinerator in the back right so you theoretically could beat something like incinerator venusaur and try to snipe off the grimmsnarl although the grimmsnarl will take something like a fake out in a max i mean you could fake out sludge bomb turn one just get a lot of damage off and then potentially like switch venusaur out uh, flare blitz the ko grimmsnarl so uh, part of the question here is does jonathan say you know what i'm willing to play with the para role because in the end, like, I got super, super unlucky in that last game. Do you try to eliminate the Grimstar immediately to mitigate those odds? Definitely multiple options you can take, but the main thing here is to not get too tilted because at the end of the day, you still have multiple games, right? You also need to win two more in the next four to actually win the set. So just mentally refreshing because I, I do think that like, Jonathan has a slightly favorable matchup between the two players here. Definitely. And it... It's hard to be Jonathan here taking that reverse sweep previously to be knocked down here just to get all those paralysis rolls, yeah. not missing the sleep powder, the other sleep powder, or wake up after the first turn. It's definitely unlucky, but that's exactly what it is, unlucky. So even going into this game two here, the luck should surely turn. So let's get into this game two to see if he can start faring a little better in this game so far. So Venusaur is going to be <laughs> coming out next to the Torkoal. And there's going to be the Grimstarl next to the Venusaur. No surprises, no sw switch-ins, but I mean, I feel like this is a pretty strong lead for both players here. Yeah, I mean, once again, I think like Jonathan had what, like six full paras, uh, Sleep Powder missed there as well, Preston's Blades hit, like there was a lot that needed to go wrong for him to lose that last game the way he did, so you know, content to just lead the same thing again, saying, well, I got really, really unlucky, and I feel like, you know, if I don't get unlucky, then I'll just be in a better spot than my opponent. So, yeah, you know, the odds of getting paralyzed as many times as he did were really, really slim. Once again, it's about trying to eliminate Venus in the early game. Uh, you want to deny that Trick Room in the late game against Porygon as well, and the goal is to just get Kyle Green in a good spot. So, I'm not surprised to see Jonathan actually go with the same combination of Pokemon, just because they still match up pretty well in this lead matchup, all things considered. You just want to, you know, hope that you don't get paralyzed so many times in once again, the odds of that were really, really slim in that last one. They're already so slim in the last one, so they're surely slimmer in this match. Both players 
going for the Max Venusaur yet again. I feel like this is a story that has been already told, reading the same chapter over and over as these players are looking to apply some early pressure on with these Venusaurs. It's all going to be about, though, whether this Venusaur can fare up better against the Thunder Wave that the Grimmsnarl, of course, went for right away. It worked so well in the last match. How could it not this time around? But it actually <laughs> misses Jonathan finally with a little luck. Misses the full paralysis, but takes a big hit from Weather Ball, Max Flare from the opposing Venusaur, but gets the opportunity to just fire back with a Max Goose into the Grimmsnarl, picking up some massive damage here. Well, there's the answer to your question, Sierra. Yeah, if you miss Thunder Wave, that's a start, right? That guarantees you an attack. Now, Jonathan's Venusaur is pretty slow, it looks like, and he's been consistently been slower in all these Venusaur matchups. So, you know, investing a little bit more in bulk, it looks like. Critically survives that Max Flare in the sun, so that's a big deal. And it's funny, in that last set, Jonathan was the one that kept getting hit by Yawn on the Venusaur. This time around, it's his Venusaur that keeps getting hit. And the, the awkward thing with Venusaur always in the second turn is, right, do you go for the Vine Lash? You really want that residual damage typically for the late game here. But Yoav actually opts for that Max Flare into that Max Guard. So great Max Guard by Jonathan there. Doesn't end up taking any damage. Gets a big Heat Wave off to eliminate Grimmsnarl. Now Venusaur falls asleep as well. So, uh, you know, this game definitely shaken up very, very differently from that last one. That Max Guard was so nice, especially since Torkoal did on the previous turn hit that Yawn into Yoa's Venusaur. So not only does Jonathan's Venusaur get to stay alive, it's not paralyzed, the Grim Snarl is not on the field, and Yoa's Venusaur is asleep. And this is just such a better position this game. Yeah, and the Venusaur has to take a guaranteed turn of sleep here, right? So uh, what's really tricky is now Jonathan can, can just keep spamming Yawn with that Torkoal and putting Yoav in a really precarious position where you basically feel forced to switch out every turn, especially with Jonathan getting one more turn of max with his Venusaur as well. So, so, so critical here to get that Yawn Torkoal to be able to put this disruption on. Uh, Vine Lash, you know, now will just add up with that residual damage as well. That will be very helpful going into this late game. And I like the decision to just go for that Vine Lash. The Ice Beam here is going to pick up the KO onto Venusaur, but that is actually pretty good if you're Jonathan, right? You get a free switch in now. Venusaur wasn't going to do too much after these early turns, other than maybe go for a Sleep Powder. It's supposed to go Weather Ball as well. Uh, in the end, Jonathan actually goes for the Heat Wave rather than going for the Yawn. You can certainly respect that because you just want to get damage onto the Venusaur. Venusaur is so close to fainting, and if you can knock out Venusaur, then Kyogre can cleanly sweep this game, right? So at this point in the match, you've distributed so much damage across the board. Uh, Venusaur now has taken, you know, uh, it, it can wake up this next turn, so that'd be critical. But I like the decision to bring out Tornadus here. You can just go for Heat Wave here. And for Yoav, right now, you're really, really hoping to get a quick wake up, maybe hit a Sleep Powder. Uh, he's actually going to opt for the Earth Power here into the uh, the Torkoal slot. I did, that one's a little tricky, because I don't think you're actually going to pick up the Knockout with that anyway, but perhaps just setting it up. It does manage to wake up, though. Uh, set it up for a KO, that is. Earth Power dealing a good chunk of damage, but as we know, that Torkoal is going to be just a-okay here with the Citrus Berry. But the Torkoal with that Yawn pressure, I mean, definitely is putting pressure out on the outside, so definitely wanting to eliminate that. But this Heat Wave coming out from the tomatoes is going to be picking up the KO on the Venusaur, finally taking it down and dealing some nice chip to the Porygon too, though the Porygon too doesn't really care too much and just opting to recover to just make it a little bit more pesky out on the field. Yeah, you have to recover in that position because if you go for anything else, Porygon will faint from the Heat Wave plus the Vine Lash damage. And if Porygon faints, then it's basically disastrous, right? Because then it's Groudon versus the world. And Jonathan obviously has the Kyogre in the back that can come in and just cleanly win the game at this point. So this is definitely going to be an interesting finish. One of my questions is whether or not like Hurricane can pick up the Knockout onto uh, Porygon if you switch the Torkoal out, for example. Torkoal here could also just go for a Yawn right now, right? Uh, I like the decision to go for Sword Stance and the uh, Trick Room. I think the comeback potential here is, hey, Groudon, just sweeping. Even if the sun is up, well, if you outspeed Kyogre under Trick Room, then you can just go for Presbyte's Blades, pick up a knockout before it can attack. So Jonathan's move here has to be really, really critical. You have to get enough out of this turn, either deny the Trick Room or get a Yawn off. And just going to be Heat Wave coming out. Heat Wave dealing a good amount of damage to that Porygon too, bringing it right down. Y'all looking to just set up, going for a Sword Sense on this ground here, so it could potentially look at sweeping. Porygon too, as you said, it's okay here and is just going to recover so that Vine Lash doesn't end up taking it out of the game. 
Torkoal is just going to go for the Yawn into the Porygon 2 here, and that's going to be big. No swap-ins left on Yawn's end. It means after this turn, Porygon 2 will be going to bed with no chances to keep recovering. Yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting end game here. I think, you know, Yawn onto Porygon just means after this turn, it can't go for uh, any shenanigans like your Impulse, for example. So this turn is interesting, right? Uh, it, like, you feel like, I feel like Yoav wants to trick him here for the Groudon in the late game, right? Because you know Jonathan has that Kyogre in the back. All Kyogre needs to do is come in safely and outspeed the Groudon and just pick up a KO onto it. So hovering Recover, I actually really like Yoav's decision to recover last turn to allow it to survive a little bit longer. It looks like he's going to go for it again, but the interesting thing is now if you just pick up a KO, Kyogre comes in for free, goes for a water type attack, and then boom, just picks up the knockouts. A Torkoal just opting to stay safe here on this turn. Jonathan hitting that Hurricane on to the Porygon 2. Of course, this should be healing it up, but is definitely... Oh no, the Rock Slide miss on the Tornado as well. There is going to be that Recover, but missing the move. The Torkoal protects you, miss it on the Tornado, and the Porygon 2 does recover its health but it's just going to be going to sleep. So even a double up, there'll be no opportunity for this Porygon 2 to recover. Yeah, I think Jonathan actually really wanted to see that Rock Slide hit. You know, typically misses are good, but if that connects, you get the free switch into Kyogre. Trick Room isn't up. Kyogre presumably just outspeeds both of these two Pokemon. Uh, Groudon on these team compositions typically will be slower because it's beneficial for Trick Room as well. So yeah, I think that miss actually hurt a little bit. Felt like Jonathan had a pretty good path to victory. Now it's weird where uh, I suppose you could just probably protect the Tornado, sacrifice the Torkoal. Uh, oh, actually doesn't protect either, but that also makes sense. You know, you, you sack both Pokemon, uh, get a free switch into Kyogre and just click Water Spell. Water spot at this point should seal up the game, assuming you're faster with the Kyogre. Of course, that Rock Slide is going to connect on both of these Pokemon, and as you said, taking them both out of the field here. And I feel like it might come down to the well, this Porygon is hurting, so I don't think it'd even survive any attack from this Kyogre coming in to even get the opportunity to set up a Trick Room. Yeah, I think Light Screen is still up on Yoav's end, so basically what this comes down to, first of all, is the speed interaction between Kyogre and Groudon. Typically, Kyogres are faster than Groudons, just based off the team compositions that both players have, but if Groudon actually manages to outspeed Kyogre, you have a chance. But if you're not confident in outspeeding, your play here is to protect, try to wake up with the Porygon and get up a Trick Room. Uh, you know, the Light Screen is up, but Groudon's definitely not taking a Water Spot from this range. Looks like Yoav's just going to click that Pressman's Blades, hoping to be faster than the Kyogre here. If you are faster and you connect, well, you're up 2-0. If not, then that should be game over, and Jonathan will tie us up at one game apiece. Who's gonna go first? It's gonna be Kyogre. This Kyogre hitting a huge water spout here, and just sweeping through y'all's last two Pokemon to take this set to a 1-1. One -one. And Yoav now, of course, has that information, knowing that this Kyogre is going to be outspeeding going into the next match. But that was such a different game, and certainly some better luck on Jonathan Den not getting the para rolls every time. Definitely shifted that match in what he could really do here. Yeah, definitely turned the tides a little bit, and ultimately what was really important for Jonathan was like mitigating that Venusaur in the early game, Venusaur on his side actually getting enough damage off, and once again, setting up Kyogre for success in that end game. I think for Yoav, now he now knows, hey, my Groudon is going to be slower than Kyogre, so one really important dynamic of this is setting up Trick Room. It was really tricky to actually set up Trick Room though in that last game because the, uh, you know, uh, the G-Max Vine Lash damage was adding up and if you click Trick Room while Double Heat Wave will actually just knock out the Porygon. So Yoav, Yoav never was in a position to actually just click Trick Room and set it up for free. So that's going to be a really critical component in this game. Uh, in the end game, can you actually manage to get Porygon and Groudon out next to each other and set up Trick Room? Uh, the win con is set up Trick Room, get that Sword Stance off with Groudon and then go for that plus two Preston Splates under Trick Room. But that's easier said than done. It certainly is. That being said, let's get into this game three to see what adjustments these players can make, or if any adjustments at all, but we are going to see a big adjustment coming out on Jonathan's end, leading with that Kyogre this time around, next to that Tornadoes, and then, of course, Venusaur and Grimstarl, that has worked for Yoav out on his end. So I was going to say, I think one adjustment Yoav could have made if he didn't like how the last couple of games went was to actually bring out that Charizard. Uh, I believe his Charizard actually has Lumberry as well, so that'd be really helpful against the potential sleep. So maybe 
uh, Jonathan leading Kyogre, expecting a mix-up from Yoav, then expecting that Charizard to come out. But Yoav can tend to just lead it with the same thing. And this is the aw uh, awkward thing about leading Kyogre now, right? Like, you have to worry about Venusaur just maxing, going for Vine Lash. Kyogre is such a critical component to this team, so you really don't want to stay and just get hit by the Venusaur, so it feels like it needs to protect or switch out this turn. This is an interesting opportunity for Tornadus to potentially consider Dynamaxing as well. Uh, and so the switch into Venusaur here is very, very good, I think, for Jonathan. And let's see if it's a max. Oh! It is going to be a max. We've seen Life Orb on this Tornadus. Does mean that in max, it can hit for a nice amount of damage. And with things like that Airstream, which is effective against this Venusaur, it can definitely do some damage. So. I feel like that's a very interesting adjustment, but I do like that. And it's certainly going to be putting some pressure on Yuav's end here, who is opting to max his own Venusaur in return. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the scary thing about maxing always in that early game is what if Yoav switched the Grim Snarl out into the Groudon and then Venusaur just launches a Sleep Powder into Tornadus, right? If you hit a Sleep Powder and something that like maxes turn one, it is a disaster. But uh, in the end, no switch out into the Groudon, so no, you know, Sleep Powder coming out here with Yoav going for that max. So this should be an interesting trade-off, right? Because uh, Tornadus now can do a sizable amount of damage with the Max Airstream. And interestingly enough, by giving your Venusaur the speed boost, first of all, look how much damage that Max Airstream does. Now, even if Yoav wants to switch out the Grim Snarl out into Groudon, the Venusaur on Jonathan's end will outspeed because of that speed boost. Uh, so that's really, really critical. Getting Venusaur in safely and kind of using Kyogre as bait. I really, really like that game plan where Kyogre didn't look like it was doing very much, but that was a fairly safe switch out. And in the end, uh, I think Jonathan gets a better trade-off on this first turn. That was so much damage that the Airstream did through the light screen as well that the Grim Sorrow opted to set up. You have returning back with that Max Geyser in to the Tornadus, doing some good damage, but unfortunately, Tornadus is going to be going so fast the next time around and is just putting so much pressure on with these Max Airstreams. Yeah, what's tricky here is, you know, Thunder Wave is probably your best option. I like the decision to Max Guard as well. Slow down the Venusaur so that Venusaur doesn't just sweep through you once Groudon comes out from Yoaxin. So I think that's important, you know, potentially reading into a Max Guard from the Tornadus. So good Thunder Wave onto the Venusaur slot, knowing that that can protect, whereas Tornadus, of course, can. Uh, Thunder Wave is going to come out, and it's going to miss the Venusaur! <laughs> Another miss Thunder Wave here, certainly making up for all the error rolls in that first game here. I mean, you have had all the luck with Paralysis the first game, and it's finally catching up to him. Two games in a row, missing big Paralysis is here, so that certainly has to hurt. Yeah, definitely. And once again, what Jonathan wants to do is just really eliminate the Venusaur. So I think a double up onto the Venusaur slot this turn makes a lot of sense. Once again, if you eliminate Venusaur, that opens the path to Kyogre sweeping in this end game. So yeah, I mean, that last turn, nothing really happened. That was a, you know, big Thunder Wave miss. We're gonna see Venusaur just go for the sleep Sludge Bomb. It's actually gonna target the Grout on this time around, so trying to eliminate the uh, Grim Snarl gets a poison to boot as well. And as we saw, Venusaur actually opted for the Max Flare here onto Jonathan's Venusaur. So that means Jonathan can go for a big attack onto Yoav's Venusaur. You know the Venusaur just protected last turn. I think I would have liked to see a double up onto the Venusaur a little bit more from Jonathan, but in the end, this will probably work out anyway, uh, because yeah, now you're gonna, oh, it's actually a double up into the Groudon slot. So maybe expecting Venusaur to just switch out that turn, really wanting to knock out uh, the Grim Snarl or do a lot of damage into whatever switches in. So notably, the Venusaur will stick around for a little bit longer. Yeah, I definitely was expecting for both of the Venusaurs to be going down this turn, but Jonathan opting instead to go into the ground on, definitely identifying it as a threat, bringing it down to about half of itself and a poisoned to boot here. So what do you think was his decision in not targeting down this Venusaur here? I think realistically, Venusaur's already chipped away at so much, right? So now Jonathan can actually bring out Kyogre. You, your Dynamax is over a Tornado, so you could actually very easily just click Tailwind and Water Spout. Yoav making that switch into Groudon actually makes this really awkward because now you're basically forced to switch the Groudon back out. And so in the end, I think it works out as well. You know, I was thinking there are multiple paths that Jonathan can take there. Uh, and I think he might have not have wanted to double up onto the Venusaur because if you double up on a Venusaur, Venusaur max cards again and gets that double protect off, you're actually in a really precarious position. So in the end, knowing like Grimstorm can protect you get guaranteed damage onto that slot also covers for a switch out option and because you have actually switched in the ground on now it's in a really really bad spot right uh full turns of rain right now tornadoes have plus two speed so it kind of feels forced to switch out but here's the thing right venusaur is already so low that's the only thing that resists water type attack so you have no safe switching into water spout at the moment and that's what makes this really really tough jonathan can very easily just click tailwind click water spout uh and 
I, I don't know. I feel like you have to switch Groudon out here, reset the weather, or go for Paralysis. It looks like, yeah, that might be the route that uh, Yoav is considering here as Groudon just goes for a Protect this turn. Tailwind, of course, coming out from that tornado. So already speedy. The one's going to come even faster as the Kyogre does go for a water spout here. Of course, normally be huge damage, but it only needed to do a little bit to be picking off this Venusaur here. And this Kyogre tornado is certainly scary on Jonathan's end of the field, especially considering what is left in the back for you all. But the Thunder Waves, I mean, it shifted the tide <laughs> so much in that first game, so no reason to not go for it and see what can happen. Yeah, with Thunder Wave, there's always a way, but what's also big here is that the Groudon is still going to be slower than the Kyogre, right? So Kyogre just needs to avoid the full para, and if it gets that Water Spout off, feels like it will win the game. So here it is. Thunder Wave finally connects. Yoav's missed the last couple, so let's see if Kyogre can attack through the full para this time around. Hurricane first coming out into the Uranon and just <laughs> takes that KO right away, so it's not even going to have to come down to the para on the Kyogre, which is gonna go and attack anyways. Nothing's gonna slow it down. And so it brings the Dragon Snarl right down. Yeah, so Jonathan also making a good decision to just hurricane into the ground and saying, hey, I've got the Life Orb, that poison damage is adding up. Uh, my Tornadius is pretty offensive. Even if you paralyze my Kyogre, I can just knock you out with Groudon. So correct decision making there. Uh, the one way, you know, Yoav could get back into this game is stalling out Tailwind uh, with the Groudon sticking around and, you know, clicking Rockside a bunch. And so uh, turn one on Jonathan's end was really, really smart. Uh, and in the end, you know, Grimmsnarl... Oh, okay, going for the self Thunder Wave. <laughs> Not <laughs> something I was... I, I saw it quickly in the menu. I didn't know if I missed saw that. Opposing Kyogre is going to get paralyzed though. The Porygon 2, despite the self paralysis, is not and will get that ice beam onto the tornadoes here. So what what was what do you think the reasoning is behind this paralysis? The best exp uh, explanation I can think of is to avoid any status conditions. Uh, you know, you don't know what Jonathan's last one is. It actually is going to be the Incineroar this time around. So by paralyzing, it means that, like, let's say Torkoal came out from Jonathan's end, then uh, you actually can't put it to sleep with the Yawn. So, um, yeah, you don't see that very often, but I actually think it makes sense in the context of this match because Yoav's win condition at this point is hope the last one is Torkoal. I don't know. I mean, Porygon still just can't do any damage with Ice Beam, admittedly, so it felt like that game was over. And part of the issue in this matchup for Yoav is he doesn't have great damage outside of the Venusaur, right? So that's why it's so critical to play as well as possible with Venusaur. It reminds me a lot of that last set we saw. Grimstorm and Porygon 2 just don't cut it in terms of damage output. So you really need to get more damage out, but it's tough because you're constantly playing around the Kyogre. So part of what I'm thinking is, does Yoav actually want to start off the game maxing Venusaur? It might be better to play passively in the early game and play towards a late game Venusaur sweep rather than using it in the early game. Jonathan stalls out this max, and then the Kyogre just comes out and puts out so much work especially with the amount of pressure that Jonathan was able to put back on Yoav. Yoav, of course, went for the early game max, but that Tornado is going for the max, hitting the max airstream, getting that speed, dealing some massive damage. So it was just a really aggressive start, but it ended up really putting you off on the back foot there. But that being said, let's head into this next match here, see what can be done from these players. Of course, Venusaur is going to be coming out next to the Torkoal again. <laughs> Swag put up for one game, but going back to the same old, same old Venusaur Grimmsnarl yet again on Yoav's side of the field. It interesting to go back, but I mean, it's a lead that's done well before, and if it can catch Yoav off guard a little bit, I mean, Jonathan just needs to take one more game to get picking up the set. Yeah, you know, I was wondering, like, maybe your best bet here, because you don't, you don't KO the Torkoal, was to just go for Sleep Powder, right? Like, Sleep can definitely put some things into your favor. That's kind of how Jonathan lost in that winner's final set. So you have actually content to just go for the Thunder Wave Max Quake play again. The issue is that I don't, I'm not sure how much Thunder Wave really helps out against that Venusaur, because you're already faster with your Venusaur anyway, right? Jonathan's Venusaur is a little bit slower, a little bit bulkier, but I get the decision of Thunder Wave. It not only slows down Venusaur speed, but more importantly, it gets those potential full para rolls, right? So you all often to just play the first turn of this fourth game the same way again. It is tough. I don't know. I really would have maybe liked to see a Charizard come out in, in the lead here instead, but no Charizard, and in the end, uh, just opting to, you know, we've seen how this uh, kind of lead has played out before. The Charizard definitely seems like it would be good, but definitely seems scary as well with the pressure of that Kyogre. Mm -hmm. Jonathan opting to match the max, get his own 
Jeep Max Venusaur out on the field here, and it's another showdown between these two beasts. All Thunder right, Wave so... coming out, and it does <laughs> connect this time around, so there were some big misses in the last game, but finally able to connect as well, as Gold goes for the Max Quake into the Torkoal, bringing it right down, but as we saw before, this Torkoal is trained to not be taken down here and is going to stick around. And once again, that's such a critical survival because it means that the Torko heals back from the Citrus Berry. And the Citrus is really critical there as well because it means the Torko won't faint from a Vine Lash and could potentially get another attack off. And yeah, I mean, we've seen this play out before and I think it, you know, worked out more in Jonathan's favor. So uh, no full paralysis, notably on Venusaur. And I, I feel like, you know, from Yoa's position, you don't really want to be relying on Thunder Wave full paras, right? Because once again, the odds of that are relatively slim, especially over the course of multiple turns. And game one was kind of just an anomaly. So once again, Venusaur gets hit by that yawn. And I feel like that's just such a big deal because the issue for Yoa is he's never able to do enough damage in the late game. You have to basically position yourself to get Groudon on under Trick Room. But that's really hard to do, especially when the Vine Lash damage starts adding up as quickly as it does. Part of the benefit of Torkoal on Jonathan's team here is that it has that yawn. So even if Trick room goes up you can just yawn and put things to sleep and so you are gonna make the switch out immediately this time around he's now definitely hoping for some full paras definitely hoping to get trick room up but uh, i'm not sure this is just the best line of action to take yeah we were just talking about how the porygon 2 in the grim snarl is not really offering enough pressure but we'll see the porygon 2 at least hit the field to try and make something happen as there's no protect on jonathan's torkoal here so it is going to be hit with the full force of this final ash and will be at least picking up that ko yeah, at least critical to get that knockout. I feel like if you don't get the KO there, it's such a big deal. But look how much Porygon 2 takes on that switch in, right? The win condition for Yoav felt like it was to get Trick Room up. But now your Venusaur falls asleep. Your Porygon is so close to getting KO'd. It's just a disastrous start to Yo uh, to this game for Yoav, right? Because now Jonathan gets another turn of Max to work with. Already got that Max Ooze Boost on the Venusaur as well. You get a free switch in into either the Tornadus or the Kyogre. I think Tornadus makes a lot of sense here because you can just bring it out and click Heat Wave. You can even Max Ooze to give it another special attack boost as well. But Kyogre is going to be the one that comes out. I think that makes a lot of sense as well because right now you can just spam Water Spell and Max Ooze. So either way, I mean, Yoav is definitely hoping for some full Paris here, but I think switching in Porygon there might have been a mistake. You know, I guess what he was playing for was hoping for a full para there, uh, and then getting Trick Room up the next turn, but now Venusaur and Yoav's end is going to take a guaranteed turn to sleep. This Porygon is just going to faint as well, and I feel like the main win con was to try to deny Trick Room, but now, yeah, or get Trick Room up, but now Yoav just can't get Trick Room up anymore. Yeah, losing that pure win con in the Trick Room's definitely not going to be fair into all for Yoav here, as this Venusaur on Jonathan's side, not letting anything slow it down here and just getting to hit another attack into this Venusaur, going for that max boost to get yet another special attack boost, which is going to be a special attack boost on this Kyogre as well. Yeah, and that's so scary, right? We've seen how much damage you can do into Groudon. That full power water spout, even in Sun, uh, did around 75%, right? So Origin Pulse now, even in Sun with that special attack boost, will do a lot more. Grim Snarl comes out as well. I mean, this is just so tricky now. I think Yoav is basically hoping for a quick wake up with this Venusaur. Also hope to paralyze everything and hope for multiple paralysis. But uh, it's even trickier now because you can't get that Trick Room up at any point. So I like the decision to bring out the Grim Snarl first. Uh, it's actually going to up for, trying to up for that light screen. It's tough. I don't know. I think I'd rather like to see a Thunder Wave into Kyogre. You're so far behind in this game anyway. You're basically hoping for a lot of paras. Uh, Weather Ball to Venusaur switching out into Groudon certainly is a possibility. Uh, and at this point, you're I think with this play, Yoav is hoping for Jonathan to misplay a little bit, right? Jonathan is ahead in this game, uh, and Jonathan might feel fear right now with the Kyogre. And if you actually protect the Kyogre as Venusaur snipes down the Venusaur on the opposing end, you can actually still come back in this game. Uh, and so I, I like the decision here from Yoav uh, to try to go for this play. Uh, but Jonathan's also going to conserve that Kyogre. Tornado is a perfect Pokemon to have in the back this time around. Of course, we're seeing the swap ends from both players here. Of course, the Kyogre being so key in the match is not wanting to risk anything, especially with the potential for Yoav's Venusaur to be waking up here. But oh. it's not going to. It's just going to keep dozing away. But <laughs> Jonathan's Venusaur not actually faring too much better. And it's actually just going to take a full para instead. Yeah, I mean, critical turn for the Venusaur to not wake up there. You get a life form Weather Ball into Jonathan's Venusaur. Now, 
It, yeah, I mean, if you get that knockout, then you actually could win the Weather War, right? It, because then Kyogre is just forced to come out. So uh, that's a nice Weather Ball play, but ends up not waking up with Venusaur. And that's why, once again, this, like, sleep is so volatile in this game. And Yoav hasn't done a great job preventing it from happening. So when you get those unfavorable rolls, I mean, three turns of sleep, for example, can just be so detrimental. So now Groudon in a really awkward spot. Jonathan, uh, on the other hand, is free to, I think, just click Tailwind and target the Venusaur slot. If you knock out Venusaur, uh, that's the biggest threat to Kyogre out of the way. So, yeah, Yoav fighting for his tournament life here, but, you know, Groudon switching out here definitely makes things tougher. Of course, Grimstone out coming oh, in. Venusaur doesn't even wake up to give Yoav a chance here as this Pernas does go for that heat wave, taking the Venusaur out and <laughs> to boot, getting the burn on the Grimstarl as well. Just a little insult to injury. Yeah, maybe, uh, you know, a little bit uh, to reverse how that first game went, but I think that's certainly going to be game over now. You have Kyogre in the lane, Venusaur for Yoav ends up staying asleep this entire time. And once again, that's the tricky thing with sleep, right? Uh, in the worst case, which happens, you know, a fair amount of the times, uh, you just don't get to attack for three turns in a row. So the main theme here is because I think Yoav really just needed to do a better job denying the yawns from coming out onto uh, the Venusaur. And in fact, it reminds me a lot of the winner's final set where Jonathan just kept getting yawned by the Umbreon, right? So yawn has actually been such a critical component to the last two sets that we've seen. And players haven't done a very good job of denying the yawn. And the thing is, if you get your max Pokemon hit with that sleep, you know, 